So types of chemical bonds. Um, a chemical bond will form when doing so causes the potential energy to be reduced. So there are charged particles um, in atoms, there's protons and ne electrons, and there's a complicated set of, of interactions as two atoms approach each other. You've got repulsion between like charges, electrons and electrons, nuclei and nuclei, um, and then you, you've got attraction between the, the nucle nucleons. <laughs> nucleons are a thing, but not nucleons. Um, the electrons and the nuclei. So if the net result of those interactions is a lowering of energy, a bond will form. If it is not a lowering in energy, nothing will happen and they'll just remain individual atoms. So one type of, ion, of bond is an ionic bond. Metals have low ionization energies. We looked at that. So they will lose electrons to form cations. And non-metals have negative electron affinities, meaning that they release energy if you give them an electron. So they form anions. So the metal will transfer an electron or two to the non-metal. And as a result of that, you'll have a positive and a negative ion, and then they are attracted by their opposite charges. So that is the essence of an ionic bond. And the key word here is transfers. So electrons are transferred from one element to another. This little table just um, tells us different, kind of summarizes the different um, types. The ionic bond, so we have electrons being transferred. And these types of bonds will happen between metals and nonmetals. We already know that because we learned to name things, right? Ionic compounds are a metal and a nonmetal. When we have two nonmetals, then it will be a covalent bond where the electrons are shared. And if we have different metals, we have metallic bonds, and we'll talk about that as well. So in a covalent bond, <coughs> covalent the, means sharing valence electrons. The prefix co is sharing. So they share, oops, they share some electrons. Those shared electrons are gonna interact with the nuclei of both atoms and hold them together. So here we have a couple of different possibilities of where the shared electron could be. It could be off to the side or way over here, but the lowest energy, the most stable place is when it's between the two nuclei. And so it's, it's attracted to both of these and that sort of forms a glue that holds the atoms together. Metallic bonding is very different. Metals lose electrons easily, but where are those electrons gonna go if nobody wants to take them? Well, they're just gonna kind of pool around the nuclei. And we'll look more at this at the end of the chapter. But the electrons are delocalized over the entire piece of metal. The electrons are actually free to move around, and so that's why um, metals can conduct electricity. But we've got this attraction between the positive nuclei and these roaming electrons, and that's what gives us the metallic bonding.